Welcome to this video abstract on a retrospective study of success, failure, and time needed to perform awake intubation. I'm Jamie Hyman from the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Awake intubation is recommended in the management of the anticipated difficult airway by many professional societies, including the American Society of Anesthesiologists and the Difficult Airway Algorithm. In particular, it should be considered whenever difficult mass ventilation as well as difficult intubation are anticipated or when it could be difficult to rapidly intubate the trachea in a patient at risk of aspiration of gastric contents. However, even when indicated, practitioners may avoid awake intubation for several reasons. They could be concerned about production pressure, especially if awake intubation is perceived to be complex and time-consuming. They could be concerned about patient safety. In particular, there could be the potential for hemodynamic perturbations from the stress response to both the topicalization as well as the awake intubation itself. There could also be concerns about patient comfort or perhaps a lack of confidence in one's own skills if awake intubation is performed infrequently. This study sought to determine how much time is actually added with awake intubation as well as to assess the effect of awake intubation on heart rate and blood pressure and to obtain an incidence of complications and failures with awake intubation. To gather the data set for this retrospective study, all awake intubations over a seven-year period from 2007 to 2014 were initially included, after which we excluded cases with incomplete or erroneous data in the anesthesia information management system. We also excluded cases with pre-induction arterial lines and central lines. This left us with 1,085 awake intubations for the study. For each awake intubation case, two cases with the sleep intubations were identified for a comparison group by propensity matching on the characteristics listed in this figure, including age, gender, ASA classification, whether or not the case was an emergency, body mass index, the presence of hypertension, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, COPD or obstructive sleep apnea. The primary outcome was time to intubation from entry in the operating room for each of the matched groups. We also looked at the average heart rate and average mean arterial pressure in the peri-intubation period for both the asleep and the awake intubation patients. Additionally, the awake intubation charts were all reviewed to look for any potential complications related to the awake intubation by the study team as well as to obtain an incidence of failures of awake intubation. And finally, an email was sent to the Department of Anesthesiology and to the Department of Surgery with a survey regarding the perception of additional time added with awake intubation. 110 anesthesiologists and 84 surgeons responded to our survey. Both anesthesiologists and surgeons overestimated the amount of time added with awake intubation but surgeons overestimated to a greater degree. 59% of surgery attendings believed that awake intubation adds greater than 20 minutes onto overall time in the operating room. The actual time added with awake intubation was a median of eight extra minutes. This eight minute time frame remained the same when considering the awake intubations performed by those attendings with the greatest amount of experience, including two with greater than 150 awake intubations in the seven year study period as compared to those with fewer than 10 awake intubations in the seven-year study period. The median difference still remained eight minutes. A resident was involved in 1,038 of 1,085 awake intubations. The average heart rate in patients undergoing awake intubation was 13 beats per minute higher than those intubated post-induction, and the average mean arterial pressure was seven millimeters of mercury higher. The complication rate in awake intubations was 1.6% or 17 out of 1,085 cases. And complications that were common included mucus plug, vomiting, and cuff leak. The incidence of failed awake intubation by a flexible bronchoscopy was 1%, which is 10 of 1,035 cases. Eight out of these 10 failed because of an inability to pass the tracheal tube through the glottic opening and in only two was there an inability to view the glottis with the bronchoscope. Awake intubation remains a mainstay of difficult airway management. 
Given the production pressure present in anesthesiology, it's helpful to know that awake intubation adds approximately eight minutes of time onto the overall time in the operating room. And even for anesthesiologists who do awake intubations infrequently, such as those who did fewer than 10 in our seven-year study period, the added time remains eight minutes. In addition, residents performed the vast majority of awake intubations in this study, suggesting that the eight-minute time frame is true for the relative novice as well. Awake intubations by flexible bronchoscopy are nearly always successful. The rate of complications is low, and most complications are minor. And in this study, hemodynamic perturbations were not clinically significant during the performance of awake intubation. Heart rates in patients intubated awake were, on average, 13 beats per minute higher, which can be explained by the near-universal administration of glycopyrrolate in patients undergoing awake intubation. And mean arterial pressures were only slightly higher at 7 millimeters of mercury. Some of the limitations of this study could be overcome with studies that are multicenter and prospective in design. For example, the additional time taken with awake intubation in a wider scope of practice settings could be ascertained with a multicenter study. It's possible that some complications were missed in this study due to its retrospective design and our reliance on accurate documentation of complications. Prospective studies could better define the risk of complications with awake intubation. Thank you for listening to this video abstract on a retrospective study of success, failure, and time needed to perform awake intubation.